Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. The first thing you do is pick a character and you will also pick a life bar here. And this will kind of put you right here that this is in live. So I'm just going to kind of show you a uh, two player game. Let's do, um, let's do seance and you would just kind of set up like this, if you will. Then you're going to shuffle up the villain deck based on the number of players. You would take a number of villain cards. So in a two player game, I'm going to take four of these villain cards and just kind of put them right here. And then after shuffling the hero attack deck, you're going to take six of these in a two player game for each of their starting hands. Then we're going to do is draw the top villain card on a turn and it will tell you how many cards you're going to put out. In this case, seven cards are going to come out. So that means you'll draw seven villain attack cards. One, two, three, four, five. Remember how I told you the board was too small? Six and seven. You also uh, flip over to functional family, add three extra villain cards to this lineup. So you went from seven to now ten. Eight, nine. Let's see if we can scoot all this down because it does not fit on the board. And then you will have ten. So that's kind of how it will all go out. So let's say Rumor is the first player. She's going to look at her cards. Now, the only person she can attack is the first person. If she doesn't attack this for whatever reason, she's got to move on to the next one. So the first one going to tell me they're going to do nine attack or two damage. So I have some options based on the new rules. Maybe I would play this card with a ten attack. So if I play this here, I'm going to kill it at the end of the round. Or I could play this nine attack, which would be the same, and that means that I would block it. So neither one of us is going to get the advantage there. So let's say I do that. And the next one seance would go so the next person in order would go and they would place an eight attack with two damage i could also play it to heal so if i wanted to play something maybe with a lower attack which they would defeat me because it's eight eight is bigger than seven but i would heal one damage obviously at the beginning of the game i don't want to do that look i don't have anything higher than an eight so i can't kill that guy and if i wanted to i could also play you know remove one villain attack but lose a life bar so maybe i would play this i would lose one life bar and then I could attack and beat that guy. So now, it's Rumor's turn, back to her. She has to attack the third card. So she cannot go back and attack this. She can't go forward and attack something else. So it's a 10 attack. I'm just gonna play this to block it. So really, it's only your three shots. I'm not gonna keep going, but you get the point. Each person has to kill the person in order. And you have three choices. Attack it, higher number. Heal it, lower number. And then you would heal the amount of points on the bottom and you would just change your thing up like that or you can block it by playing the exact amount now each of the characters are also going to have so after you get through the whole list you can play one of the special powers that they have uh, rumor says tell a villain to die so she could give up one of her life points it always costs a life points to use this and just kill somebody right out so let's say this 10 earlier that we had maybe i don't want to waste this card i would go ahead and heal the three on it because i had damage because I know later on I'm going to have Rumor kill this. So Rumor can just kill this guy right out and it goes away based on her power. But it does require one of her life points to do so. Now Seance has his power. Pick a card from the discard pile to use immediately. So if he had any cards in the discard pile from earlier rounds or whatever. He can pick that up from the dead right thematic. And play that against anybody he wants. Once again it costs him a life point to do so. If you ever get all the way down to your life points you die. If both people die. In this case, it would be over. A three-player game, you would need all three to die. So there does have a little bit of player elimination in the game, although the rulebook makes a mention that you can stay in the game and still help make decisions. Anybody who wasn't blocked or defeated, you will now take damage from them. So in this case, let's say these two people, uh, we weren't able to block them and kill them. They would do three damage to us. We can decide how we want to take that damage. And they go up here under final battle. So once I get through... All four of these, now these guys would all be discarded. And once I get through this entire stack, then we would move, if you're still alive, we would move to the final battle, the apocalypse, which would just be a collection of all the people that you weren't able to defeat during the game. So then you would take all of these cards that you didn't defeat, and it could be 15, it could be three cards. You would take the four guys that you beat earlier, the four villains, you would pick one at random, which are always stronger, 16 attack and four damage. And you would put that out. And now I have to fight these guys exactly the same way. A dysfunctional card still comes out. Now, if you get one of these villain attack boosts, that's easy. This goes on the top one. So 16 just became a 26. 
Um, and then you have to defeat these guys. If you survive, you win the game. If you lose, you, you lose. So you get all the way to the end, have this final battle, and lose, which is fine. Uh, but this game is extremely, extremely difficult. 